This story starts when I was younger. It was at a time when not everyone ran around with a cell phone, and to get on the internet, you had to listen to the fire truck. My parents had taken me to a mall during Christmas time so I could run amok. They were the type of parents to give me a lot of freedom like that because they thought I'd be careful and also allowed me to run around in the neighborhood by myself with the others. I went from shop to shop in the mall, mostly wanting to see the things that the mall was doing such as events and stuff. They also had some ride that I really wanted to get on, but it was always full. I still had faith that I'd be able to get on it, like the guy said, but as I waited for it, something was happening. I noticed a very strange looking man that wouldn't take his eyes off me. I thought it was extremely creepy and kept moving around which is probably the reason why I couldn't get on the ride. He never moved though, but looking back with my adult mind now at my younger self then, moving would have done nothing because the guy could have just turned his head to follow me. I ran around the place giving up my spot in line because the guy running the ride couldn't keep up with me, but I didn't realize I was doing that. I forgot about wanting to get on the ride when the guy watching me finally moved towards me. I thought he was going to try to do something, so in my little pea brain, I couldn't make the logic that if I stayed in the crowd, he wouldn't have done anything. I thought I should get away, and that's what I did. I ran off to another part of the mall. My problem was that he followed me, and there was less people there. My parents told me to meet them in a certain place, but taught me not to talk to anyone, stay away from shady looking people, and don't take things from anyone. And that should have been enough. I was using one of those lessons to get away from shady people. This guy just did something I didn't anticipate. He followed me persistently. I started looking for a place to hide, but this guy was running after me to keep up, and he was doing a good job of it. The lesson here is that you shouldn't let your kids run around by themselves in a mall. I feel like this should be easy. Anyways, I found a good hiding place in a pet store at the end of the mall when I managed to bolt in without the guy seeing where I went. The plan was to hide in the back and play with the kitties, but I didn't. I thought since I didn't see the man, he wasn't there and he couldn't see me. I didn't think logically then of course, so I was in full view of the shop window playing with the bunnies. When I left to go to my parents because it was becoming that time, the man was standing nearby and noticed me leaving the store. He stayed nearby and I didn't think his intentions were to watch out for me, so I'd stay safe or anything because why just me? I ran to the meeting spot my parents had designated and the man followed me all the way there, but kind of melted into the crowd when we got there. I almost immediately forgot about him when I saw my dad, because I felt safe then. Neither of my parents noticed the guy either, but in a place like that, how could anyone? I thought the man was just going to disappear into the crowd, and that would be the last I see of him. We got food from the mall and went home almost right after that, with me whining about not getting on that ride thing that I wanted so badly to get on. So we went home for the day, but there was something happening that none of us realized. We were being followed. I didn't know it because I had already forgotten about the guy, and my parents didn't know it because they didn't see him in the first place. When we got home, Far past my bedtime was when I heard someone going up and down the street. I remember getting up out of bed to see out of the window, and noticed within about 10 minutes, the same truck kept passing by the house. I really didn't know why, and I figured they may have just gotten lost looking for a house. I remember this detail because at night, nobody ever drove up and down the road and it was a cul-de-sac where my windows faced the street. It was only the next night that I found out who the truck belonged to when he parked out front and got out. It was the guy from the mall. 
I remember being scared out of my mind because he got out of the truck in a cloud still puffing. I thought that the guy didn't live in the neighborhood since the mall was so far away. I was right about that since I'd never seen him around there before. He had no business being there. He also had no business walking up into my yard, but he seemed to think so. He had followed us all the way from the mall and found out where I lived. I don't know what he wanted with me, and I still don't. I kept watching him as he came up into the yard, possibly looking for something to take. He trotted around the house for a little while, and every now and then, I'd see him come up into the front yard from my window, which I knew he couldn't see in. He didn't seem to do much besides walk around and be creepy, but as an adult, I assumed he was looking for a way into the house. I have no idea why he picked me to follow, or what his intentions were. Maybe he thought we were some sort of rich family by the way I was dressed, and then saw my parents. If he assumed that, he couldn't have been more wrong. I didn't tell anyone what I saw because of some weird reasoning I no longer have as an adult, but I was insanely scared of something. The man showed up a few times and then started a search around other houses. But one of those times, the police were called, and I watched the man being hauled off and his truck towed. I never knew why he was arrested, but he didn't come back to the neighborhood. I forgot all about the creepy man until recently when something like this happened to me again. But it was actually someone from my work who followed me home. Their intentions were good, but I didn't like to be followed home like that when they could have just waited for me to come back in on Monday. It reminded me of a long lost memory and I wanted to share it. I was going to high school at the time and I was made to walk by myself every day since my mom had to work earlier than I even got up. She worked like that all the way through my later school years so that she could be home for me in the afternoons. During my walks in my freshman year, I had a car follow me to and from school every day and didn't notice until the car pulled over one day and they rolled the window down. Behind the wheel was a man with a school coach look, the salt and pepper stubble, salt and pepper buzz cut, and the most normal clothes that you can think of. He was a guy with a gut that was touching the steering wheel. He called out to me and told me to get in the car and he'd drive me to school. I told him no, but he kept driving with me as I walked, insisting. I walked almost an entire street before he pulled off and left me alone. I wasn't about to get in the car with him. Even if I was dumb and I would have gotten in the car with someone I didn't know, his car smelled horrible, and I wouldn't get into it anyways. There was this overwhelming wet dog smell, and I couldn't stand it. He finally rolled up his window and moved on, but that wouldn't be the last time he'd asked me to get into the car. That was while I was on my way to school. On my way home that same day, he found me walking back, and there were other people around this time. He still drove up to me and told me to get in the car. No one thought it was weird or anything, and they just all kept walking. When I told him no that time though, he drove up on the sidewalk and almost hit a girl to block my path. She scrambled out of the way and kept walking. I asked the guy what his problem was, and he told me that a young girl shouldn't have to walk by herself. I pointed to the next girl walking by herself and said, why aren't you bothering her then? He didn't give me an answer to that, and just told me again to get in the car. I was kind of getting annoyed then, so I told him to piss off. He backed up off the sidewalk and left. He was there again the next day, but this time he was way more aggressive. He came by with his driver's side window down, yelling at me to get in the car. Well, I yelled back and said go to hell. He squealed his tires out of anger in the road and then hit the brakes really hard for his car to do a bounce. Now I was thinking maybe he was on something by his bold behavior. I didn't want this to go on any further. 
I was going to make a big deal out of it when I got to school, so something at least got done about it. Before then, though, I had to deal with this. There wasn't anywhere for me to go, since no one was really around and there was nothing to hide behind. I kept walking along trying to ignore him, but he kept up with me all the way to the school. When I got close enough to the front office, he sped off. I went into the front office and told the officer that the school had in there, who actually couldn't do anything himself. He had to call the police and then have them come to the school. Thankfully there was one close by. I told them what the guy looked like, what the card looked like, and had a few students come through who saw it back me up. The guy was being a real creep, and something had to be done about that. The officer's eyes widened when I gave him a description of the guy, and he told me that he had been reported before this as well. He was stalking other girls on the way to school in some other places as well recently, and he was very slippery. I found someone to ride home with that day because the girl that saw the whole thing that morning was going my way. A few days later, I was told that they caught the guy trying to snoop around the school and pick up students. Thankfully he wasn't able to, and got picked up by the police. I didn't see him ever again, so maybe he finally got the message. My grandparents owned a farm way out in the middle of nowhere when they were still with us. This farm was on 20 acres of land, and they had sections of the yard fenced off for animals that they were raising. The cows were weird. They would hear or see any little thing and start freaking out. I used to stay at their farm on weekends when I was a teenager going to school, and even before then. When I would, I used to like to go out at night and explore the woods surrounding the farm for fun, because I really had nothing better to do. It was honestly better than sitting inside and doing nothing until I got bored enough to fall asleep. Every time I would go out there, it was at least fun enough to hold my interest, and it was big enough out there to hold trails but not big enough to get lost in. I would explore and be back before anyone even noticed I was gone, and I never got caught. Either that, or they knew and just never said anything because, whatever, weekend. My weekends out there were not the best since I would mostly think about wanting to go back to the city to see my friends, and not be bored. But my parents insisted that I go help my grandparents. The only thing was, they told me I didn't even have to do anything really anyways. So one night, I ventured out of the house. I was in high school, so I think I was around 16 at the time. I walked out to the back pasture, and started hearing the cows freak out for some reason. I couldn't tell what, because it was pretty dark out, and there wasn't moon to light up the fields. That probably wouldn't have done much anyway. I mean, they were screaming and mooing really loudly about something. I figured it was a raccoon running around in the field or something, but they would freak out over even a mouse. I went out that way, avoiding them, but still had to listen to them freak out for a while. The side of the woods that I was on was far from them, and as I was walking through one of the small trails back there, I started hearing something scamper. I didn't really worry about it since I heard that all the time anyway. I kept hearing it get closer to me and then back off the whole time I was out there, but I didn't see anything. It did sound a bit huge to be a raccoon though, but I really don't know what else it could have been out there. I went back home around my usual time around 2 a.m. because I started getting tired around then. The cows were still kind of being weird on the other side of the pasture, but had mostly calmed down. I went to bed and didn't think any more about it. The next night, however, I could hear the cows freaking out from inside the house. My grandfather said that he heard it the night before and was wondering about it, but now he was starting to get worried about it. He wanted me to go with him out to the pasture and look around, so we hopped in the truck and we went out there. The cows were migrating to the other side of the pasture, presumably away from whatever was out there. 
When we got out there, my grandfather had a spotlight and we looked around, but we found nothing at all. The cow stopped freaking out and started quieting down. We went back inside and a little after my grandparents went to bed, I went back outside. I went back out to where the sound was from last night and I heard scampering. Only this time, it seemed to be a lot closer than it was last night. I could also see a small light being turned on and off. Without any protection other than my teenager invincibility, I went towards the light. The light kept moving away from me, and I was sure it was a person then. I stopped seeing the light after I guess they caught wind of me being there, and they stopped using it, but it was way too dark to see out there. Suddenly whoever had the light came running at me in the dark and knocked right into me. I thought I had my footing, but I found myself on the ground in an instant, but I could hear heavy footsteps running away behind me. I also heard a soft pop and what sounded like something hitting the ground. I got up and walked over to where that happened, and there was an older man laying there unconscious. The dumb dude had knocked himself out running through the woods in the dark. Who does that? I knew what I had to do though. I called my grandfather out and had him come out with a truck and a light. He wasn't too happy about it, but he wasn't mad at me for being out there and catching some guy. He was mad that he had to get out of bed. The guy didn't wake up, but we called the police because this guy was trespassing on private property, and when he woke up, we were going to get a story on why he was out there in the first place. The police got there and woke him up. We didn't want to touch him, but they did. The man was about in his 50s, with a set of hunting gear on, and he came clean to the police that he was out there hunting at night. This was out of hunting season as well, so I'm sure there's laws against that too. The guy was taken off, and we went over to make sure all the cows were all safe, because the guy didn't say what he was hunting, and he didn't seem to be all there. They were all fine, and that was the end of them freaking out. We did have a few more incidents on the farm before they both passed, but that was probably the worst. Some guy out in the field stalking cows and generally being a weirdo. Who thinks to themselves, I'm going to go hunt on some old couple's land in the middle of the night, off hunting season. Whatever his reason, he didn't come back to our fields. It took me forever during this to realize that I was being followed, but I was walking around the city to go to places to get some things done that day. I didn't have a car yet, but at least the city was mostly all close together. All the places I had to go were probably within a mile or so radius. I walked down to the first few places I needed to go that day, and didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. So as far as I knew, this happened a little later. When I noticed him the first time, he didn't try to make an effort to move towards me or anything. This guy had a flat bill cap, a blue button-up t-shirt, a pair of raggy torn jean shorts, and a pair of socks and sandals on. Not really all that noticeable, I guess, when you're running around trying to get things done in the city during the day but I saw him a few times. I had done this before where running from place to place, you can see the same person multiple times. That's not all that strange. But when they always seem to look at you in a funky way or move towards you, that's when something is up. Later on in my running around, I saw the guy several times show up in the places I was going like he planned on going to the same places that day. I started to think it was strange, but he did start trying to approach me. It was a bit surreal, but he had this strange look on his face when he did, and I quickly got out of his way. After that, I noticed him following me everywhere. The guy was actively following me, and I very much knew it. He didn't do anything at the places that I'd walked into and I gave him the slip a few times to see that he walked into a place, looked around, and walked out. 
If you're wondering, it's a small city about a road and a half thick. It's not hard to find someone. I figured this guy was going to keep pursuing me for whatever reason he had. One, I wasn't going to be caught in a desolate area to be robbed. And two, I needed to go home and get away from him. It was probably just the safer thing to do. I only had a little way to go before I was at home anyway, and if I had left when I wasn't being followed, it was safe. Well, on my way home, a beat-up old pickup truck that had the gold spray paint rusted off of it pulled over beside me on the sidewalk, and the same guy who had been following me around all that time got out. I was thinking the worst was about to happen, but to my surprise, all the guy did was walk over to me calmly but quickly and hand me back my wallet. Shocked, I could only tell him thank you, and then he got back in his truck and left. I wasn't sure what happened. Out of 20 years of carrying a wallet, I had never dropped it. It was a very odd experience. I thought the guy was going to throw me in the back of his pickup and I'd never be seen again or something like that. But all he did was hand me my wallet back. What a cool guy. I went on home after that. Some few days later I was at home in bed. I think it was about 1am or so and I kept hearing things on the outside. I did get up to check it out, but I couldn't find anything. Whatever the noises were, they didn't really seem to be caused by anything. I figured whatever was going on outside wasn't my concern while I was trying to sleep. Pretty dumb logic, but that's what happens when you try to care about something while you're sleep deprived. I also know it's obvious to you what is going to happen in this story, so I'll hurry it along. I had a few nights of this happen. I would wake up and I would hear something outside that I couldn't get up fast enough to find. I even walked outside to try to find the source of the noise, and I couldn't. It was a loud screech followed by a banging sound. I stayed up the rest of that night to see if I could track what it was that was causing it. I did in fact find something. On my front porch, I have a rail that moves and screeches as it bangs against the side of the house. I had no clue that it came loose and started doing that again. What, that wasn't obvious? How about the fact that there was a truck driving in front of my house every few hours, with the gold rusted paint making horrible screeching sounds as it went down the road? What about the bang? The truck door was being slammed. I knew who it was. The guy thought he was being sneaky going up and down the road, but I know what he was trying to do. He was looking for the address he had gotten off my license in my wallet to break into the house. He wasn't such a cool guy after all. I know all of my neighbor's vehicles for around two blocks, and I'd never seen his truck anywhere in the area until that night. My thoughts were that he saw that I was carrying a decent amount of cash in my wallet, and didn't take it because he thought there might be more in the house. I was right. He found the address and tried a few days later, but I was already ready for it. As soon as the guy parked down the street and got out of his truck to walk down to my house, I saw him and called the police. When they got there, he was sneaking around my property trying to find a way in. I told the police what the guy looked like and what he was driving, all of the details go along with it. They had him arrested in no time and I stepped outside to give my statement on it that included the other day when he found my wallet or pickpocketed off me. It was scary to me to think that someone would go through that much trouble to find out there's really nothing in the house to steal. At least nothing came of it, and that guy didn't show his face around here again. I went on vacation with my family around 2012, and it was one of those tourist towns where they had attractions and hotels everywhere. We were going to see some huge ancient garden with a tower in the middle of it, and take pictures and all that, but we needed a hotel. 
The first hotel we stopped at was kind of bad. The room was pretty much falling apart, and they still had an old CRT television in it. The room smelled a bit too. This was the place we were going to stay for the night. I wasn't really wanting to sleep when we got there at night, so I started strolling around the area. I liked how desolate the place was because it felt like a ghost town, and I'd always loved how peaceful that could be. It was pretty much like the town I lived in then. You could walk up and down the street and not see a single car at night. This is exactly how this place was. I walked down the street a little bit to an old gas station that looked like it would close by 8pm, but had a sign that said it was open all night. I figured it was probably time for a drink, so I went in and got one. Inside there was this girl with a hoodie just standing by the drinks, staring off into space. I didn't pay her any mind, but it was weird to me how she was positioned. She was in front of the coolers, facing the snack aisle, just staring with her hood up and her hands in her pockets. I got my drink, paid for it, and left. She did walk out of the store before I did, but she went in some other direction. I started back in the direction of the hotel and pretty much forgot all about her. That is until I heard her trailing me. I looked over my shoulder to see her, but I didn't pay her much thought still. I kept walking back towards the hotel, but she kept going in the same direction I was. When I got back, she kept walking and I went inside for a little bit to drink my drink and go to the bathroom. I came back out a little while later and I immediately saw her wandering around the hotel grounds. I thought to myself that she was probably staying there and was just out and about at night like I was. Although it kind of ruined the ghost town thing. She didn't seem to notice me and I was actually starting to get a bit weary of her since she didn't look so good but I ignored her the best I could. I started walking the other way to see what was over there, and as soon as I got on the sidewalk, I noticed that she followed me like a lost puppy. I dipped around in an alleyway to lose her, and back around, thinking that I'd just go back to the hotel. She somehow knew exactly where I was going and cut me off. I dipped around her and bolted back to my room. I still wasn't sure what to think about that, but it kind of freaked me out. I stayed in the rest of the night, but the hotel was a bit expensive, so we went and got another one the night after. That day though, we saw most of the garden and got some great pictures, but the drive home was way too far to go at night, so we stayed at a way better place. I'd totally forgotten about the girl by now from the previous night and her warping powers. I probably should have remembered because I found her again or more like she found me again. I walked out of the hotel and she had gotten behind me somehow a little ways down the street. We were on the other side of town. That's a hell of a coincidence. Or maybe she was stalking me and knew where I was going to be. I didn't know what she wanted, but I was about to turn around and ask her. I thought about it, but I might have had some anxiety from it. What if I were to turn around and she start trying to flip it around on me or something? Or maybe she was trying to rob me. I wasn't much bigger than she was, but I don't think that meant anything. She could have been a murderous psychopath or something, and she was waiting for the perfect spot. After all that went through my head, I did turn around and try to confront her about it. She stopped and turned around and just stood there. I was caught fully off guard by that and lost any will to say anything. I turned back around and so did she. I turned back around yet again and she didn't this time. I asked her what she was doing following me around like this, but all she did was stare at me. Now I was really freaked out. If she had at least said something, anything, I wouldn't have been as much. She just stood there staring at me for a good 30 seconds before I started backing off and running the other way. I had to find a way to get back to the hotel without her trailing me the whole way. Luckily, I did find a side street that went back to the hotel. 
but she had gone the other way to get in front of my door. I saw her sitting in front of my door waiting for me when I came back up into the parking lot. I was not going to go over there, and she didn't see me. I slipped into the 24-7 lobby that they had on the other side leading to the pool and told someone in there about her. They thought it was weird as well. I couldn't identify the girl's age or anything, but they had the police go out there and check her out. I don't know what happened, but they put her in the back of the car and took her off. I went back to my hotel room, and nobody was none the wiser that anything had even happened. Maybe that was for the best. I went back home thinking about what happened to her and wondering what she was up to in the first place. It's been years, and I still think about her creepy behavior from time to time even now. We haven't been back to that town since, but wouldn't it be even creepier if we did and she showed back up like last time? I'm a female, and I had a boyfriend who was absolutely obsessed with me after we broke up. The breakup was pretty average. Something happened, I got mad at him, and I broke it off. We'd been together since high school to where I was about 23. It was a good relationship, but there were problems at the end I just couldn't deal with. We shared a lot of things, such as we had a joint bank account that we sent each other money back and forth to. We shared a phone plan. We shared a lot of things. Since the breakup, I moved a little ways away from where I started, but none of that had to do with him. Although it was actually nice not having to be within walking distance of him. That really didn't matter, of course. He found ways to be around me. I still went to the same places that I previously did, just without him. I didn't see him for a good long time before he started showing up at those places that I was at again, but it was all the time. He would just casually run into me as if we were strangers meeting for the first time. But after it started happening every single time I went somewhere, I started to worry about it. He didn't really have any business at the places I would go when we were together, so why would he then? I didn't ever bother to question him about it, but I also wanted as little contact as possible, if at all. A while later, I started seeing him around my neighborhood sometimes. I thought he may not have had a reason to be in my neighborhood, but it looked like he was just passing through. I lived well out of his way and knew everyone he knew. It wasn't like he was here to see a neighbor of mine or anything. I'd see him a few times a week at first, and then it turned into almost every day. He wasn't very good at hiding the fact that he was there to stalk my house. He would walk specifically around my area. When he started taking pictures of my house was when I started to get scared though. I had no clue how he found where I lived unless he followed me home without me noticing. Out of stupidity, I didn't do anything at first, because I didn't want to stir the pot and thought maybe he would just move on after a bit, and I'd stop seeing him altogether. I had no clue he could be so persistent. I only called the police when I saw footprints around my house. I wasn't hoping that they would identify the footprints or anything and magically catch him at it. I was hoping just to inform them about someone who shouldn't be stomping around in my yard, so they would patrol the area. I saw a few cars in the area after that, but I never saw them stop or anything. My ex came up into the yard all the time by then, but only one time did I catch him. He was sneaking around in the yard, trying to see in my windows with his phone out. I grabbed a weapon and pushed open the window a little bit to ask him why he was in my yard. He started stumbling over his words and said that he thought it was someone else's house. I told him I knew he was lying and he said that he would leave. I stupidly believed him, but I told my dad about it and he was furious. He said next time I saw him to come wake him up and tell him. I did see him again 
In fact, it was the very next night, because he's kind of dumb. He came up the same way and did the same thing, but I ended up telling my dad about it, who went outside and did something about it. He trapped him in the backyard and interrogated him. It turns out that he found out where I lived because of something I completely overlooked. I would told no one where I was moving, and he didn't follow me back to my house at any point. As my dad had him trapped, he asked him what he was doing at the house and how he found me. He said that his phone told him where I was at. Apparently while we were together, he'd installed a tracking app on my phone that ran in the background that I never knew was even there. He'd use that to see places I was going, and that's how he would seemingly run into me everywhere. This was a cut and dry case of stalking, and I called the police to get him out of there. He started crying when they put him in the back, like he was remorseful or something. I know him well, he wouldn't have done that. He was crying either because he got caught, or because he was trying to get pity of some kind. He was a stalker being in a place he had no business being. I didn't think anything of it when I kept my phone from the relationship. He told me that it would be fine to keep the phone that he bought me, but then I knew why. I did get my own phone plan and split my bank accounts from him, but that didn't mean what he set up on my phone would have been affected by that. That night was the last time I saw him ever. I got myself a new phone the next day with my dad's help, and I got rid of the phone that my ex bought me because there could have been some traces of something else that he set up. I also changed all my passwords to all of my accounts, in case that might have been compromised as well. If you ever find yourself in my situation, always get a new phone and take precautions if someone else bought it for you, otherwise you could find yourself in danger. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind, Who is that you? behind you?